Hi everybody, welcome to Paris Today and welcome to episode number 41 of my series of live video tours through Paris. If you can hear my voice right now, you're probably on the replay and thank you for that. I'm waiting for some of my live viewers to arrive and I see a few of them are here already, fantastic. Welcome to early arrivals. Let me get up, I'm actually kneeling on the cobblestones at the moment. Hi Phyllis Cartwright, you're the first uh, name that I see today, fantastic. Some of you who are already lovers of Paris and, and veterans of this city uh, may recognize this. This is called the Cours du Commerce Saint-André. And uh, we won't be doing this alleyway today, but I thought it would be a great visual to start off with. Very busy today. Uh, Tara Bax here, Heather Liebhart. Hello, bonjour, bonjour, everybody. Number 41, we are... Hi there, people are looking at my screen. <laughs> That's all right, have a nice day. Um, okay, so people are always attracted uh, to the equipment. And uh, here we go, number 41, Saint-Germain-des-Prés, specifically Odéon. Uh, we are not going to go down this little alleyway today, but it's a good starting point. The Cours du Commerce, here in the 6th arrondissement. Hi, everybody. Already, already well over 100 of you. Fantastic to have you. I'm really excited about this one. This one is going to be, this episode is going to be jam-packed with details. We're going to do almost a bit of a rapid fire with all of the great details here. Um, a lot of people, including myself, have the feeling that they know this area of Saint-Germain-des-Prés as we turn around back toward Odéon. But interestingly, when you go through Odéon, most people, including myself, we're always running to something else. We're always on our way to, to get somewhere. So you don't often spend the time to just walk around and stroll and see all the details around you here. So that's obviously the aim of this series no, yeah, no, yeah. that we've done in the last 40 episodes. And so here we are, Sixth Only Small, Saint-Germain-des-Prés. We're gonna do Odéon today. Hi everybody, thanks for uh, sending your bonjours and your hellos. Before we leave our starting point here, the Cours du Commerce Saint-André. Just admire that here. Ooh, yeah. The visuals are going to be real fun, so uh, strap in. I know some of you are in your PJs in your bed. I think uh, Jennifer Warren, a veteran uh, viewer, told me that that's how she watches in the morning while her fiancé goes out and fetches coffee for her. So hello to you, Jennifer, and everybody else watching. I don't want to pass this up for those of you who are fans of our famous street artist invader. There's a very quiet one hanging out right there. And we're going to cross the very busy Boulevard, uh, Boulevard Saint-Germain. Before we do, we can already see here in, in Odéon, in the heart of it, is this statue of a, a gentleman called Danton. Danton was one of the founding fathers of the French Revolution. Ooh, it's noisy out here today. And Danton's house was right there. In fact, in this area of the 6th arrondissement, where, right where most of those French revolutionaries resided, this was their hood, these cafes were their hangouts, etc., etc. But when Mr. Houseman, famously in the 19th century, bulldozed away the older version of Paris and put in these boulevards, like the one I'm crossing, um, he destroyed the house of Mr. Danton, and they put a statue right there where the house was. Uh, Danton, you can see him up there. What he was known for was he, during the revolution, he was actually behind the push to go storm the Palace of Versailles. I know he's a bit backlit right now, so it's hard to make him out. But So stormed Versailles, uh, brought Marie Antoinette back to Paris, and along with King Louis XVI, and he was behind that. And in fact, the, the angry mob that went to Versailles sometimes are referred to as the Dantonists under Mr. Danton here. And then later he was uh, in charge of, he gave the order as leader of the government back then to remove all the royal symbols uh, throughout Paris and the rest of France. He's seen there, I know he's very dark here in your, in your screen, but Danton is seen uh, recruiting new soldiers for the French military. So he was quite good at that. Uh, Kathy Bryan just whipped out a, a quote from uh, Danton. Well done, Kathy. Well done. All right, so here we go. A nice plethora of details here in Odeon. I'm excited to get through all of them with you. Why would I show you a Starbucks? I'm not in the habit of promoting Starbucks, particularly in Paris, although I myself will go in there if, I, if I'm craving caffeine and I can't find better. Uh, but I just want to let you know here in Odeon, uh, the bathroom code, if you ever need it, is 1319-1319, and you can pop that into your notebooks if you're coming through here. Um, if you haven't been to Paris before, uh, believe me, once you're here, you'll appreciate a, a public bathroom if you need one because they're not always easy to come by. So bathroom code when you walk in there, 1319. 
for those who might be interested at one point. Maybe I'll save at least one or two of you in the future. Hi, Jennifer in New York. Hi, Juan. Ooh, this is great. This is one of my favorite little hidden spots. Okay, so this doorway shows us this is a hair salon. Lucia Irasi. Irachi? Irasi? But to get to this hair salon, and uh, you'll recognize this visual as I walk through the corridor, because this is what I use for the announcement on Facebook for this video. Look at this. So this corridor with the beautiful fixtures. Now that image I posted to Facebook earlier was a bit of cheating because th these are just mirrors. So there aren't that many fixtures, but the mirror effect obviously adds uh, quite a lot of fun when you enter here to, the, to head to the hair salon. All right, here we go. And you can go all the way through. People live up top here, so this is their, uh, their staircase, nice and worn over the years. And then to get to the hair salon, you continue through. There's a bit of a, a little bit of a garden courtyard here with some benches. And then of course, not to bother too many of the wealthy customers in there, the elite of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, but there you get an idea. That's me, hi. And another perspective. I'll probably never use this hair salon, but I always pop through here when I'm in the area because it's fun, as you know, if you're a bit of an urban explorer like me in search of these spaces, it's fun to feel like you have your own version of the city. There's a bit of sort of a mezzanine up there, which we can't access, but it adds to the visual. And back out. Okay, if ever, I, I, it bears repeating really, if ever there's a part that's blurry or there's a disconnect or my connection's not very strong, know that later on I'll be posting a high def replay um, recorded to my phone that you can watch later on the same Facebook page. So um, don't worry, you can always go back and see these details in nice, crisp, clear resolution if it's not the case live. Speaking of our street artist, Invader, Here's one that it's actually really big and surprising. It's so easy to overlook right here in the heart of Odeon, right next to a cinema. I'm going to show you that. Look at the name of the cinema, Danton. Same gentleman whose statue was here, the French revolutionary leader. Also this cafe next door named after him as well, Danton. In fact, let me zoom in on a menu. There is. And there's a street named after him as well. So this used to be where his home was before Hausmann removed it. Let's cross the street here. We'll get further into the Odeon section of the 6th Halle Small. We've got a lot of doors. I could have technically called this the door tour. And I know plenty of you out there are going to be pleased with admiring so many doorways today. Up there, if you can make it out, we've got the old Greek god of Mercury with the wings on his helmet. Mercury used a lot throughout Europe because he was the god of many things, including commerce. So when you see a, an old commercial space, shopping arcades, etc., cetera, uh, not uncommon to see Mercury. So why is he up there on the door? Well, this is a bank today, an HSBC bank. So if it was built originally as a bank, it would make sense that the god of commerce would be um, featured there. Missy Lamb said Danton looked angry on that menu. I can tell you, Missy, he was known as a very burly and boisterous and, and um, a very difficult guy. In fact, Danton's own family uh, did their best to avoid him. So he was kind of nasty and temperamental. He almost was always scowling. So no surprise that it's the case on that menu. We're going to cross again when we can. This is uh, 
A lot of activity here. Here we go. Sacrificing my body as usual for all of you. Over 200 live viewers. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we've got uh, some great eateries, great hotels and eateries all around. So let's start with a famous French chef called uh, Yves Condebord. You can see his name up there, Condebord. And he has a few eateries right next to each other here. This is called L'Avant Comptoir de la Mer, uh, the counter of the, um, of the sea. And they have a, a, a bit of a seafood oyster bar here. Bonjour. If you can make that out. So the oysters. And you can step right up here and grab some and all of the fixins there. And there's a man doing his business. I've never shucked oysters, but boy, it, it scares me just watching it. Let's see if we can watch him do one here. Voila. And then just a quick peek without bothering anybody. Look at this fun curtain. So these uh, eateries of Comme de Bord, uh, you've got this sort of curtain that you walk through with uh, lobsters enjoying a glass of wine. And then just to give you a quick idea without going in. They got the menu items hanging from the ceiling, if you can make that out. All right. Merci. I quite like this too. Same chef has l'avant comptoir de la terre. So to the left of me, it's la mer, the, the sea. And this is la terre, the earth. This is mostly pork products, as you can see. Same layout, the same design as the other eatery, but this curtain has a piggy. A piggy. And you'll see that the, the design of the restaurant is similar. Let's cross over again. This doorway is pretty, but what I wanted to show you was specifically up top above it, sitting atop the doorway. If you can make it out, there's a number four on that little box. See that little triangular box? A number four on that side and a four on that side. So what are those? They were the old illuminated address boxes of the city. Um, when the city of Paris constructed its own apartment building owned by the city of Paris or built on a plot of land owned by the city, it was obligatory um, to put these illuminated boxes. And so this would have been gas lit originally and then later with electricity. And that number four would have lit up at night. And they were all around this area, but very few of them have survived. So hopefully you can make that up. One of those classic vestiges of old world Paris, a different version. This is a cafe called Les Editeurs. I almost walked by another great door. Again, this is sort of the door tour today. Look at that beauty. We're gonna get nice and close here. There's a little squirrel there among the, the foliage and the, the floor up. If you can make him out with his little tail sticking out on the left. And if I back up. It's subtle, but real lovely. In fact, these two doorways together. Let's go ahead and back all the way out here. Quite like that composition. And cars are coming, so back on the sidewalk. Again, if you're just joining us, we're in the section called Odeon, Odeon in the 6th arrondissement. It's one of the busiest hubs for sure. A lot of great eateries and, and hotels and history. If I scroll up, this is the same building that had the little squirrel. And if you can make it out here on the underside of those balc the, the bay windows, a little bit more loveliness.
Il Supli is an Italian restaurant, high-end Italian. And they're closed until dinner, but if I can get in there close enough, something like that. Yeah, you can sort of make it out, right? It's fancy. They also sell high-end uh, gelato right here. This is a pretty white and gold establishment. Peak. Oh, I'm always doinking things, right? Always doinking the windows. Uh, so all these little crumbles and the gelato. There's a tea room next door as well. I don't want to bother the people in the tea room, but it's quite fancy and lovely. Merci, au revoir. I don't know what those are, but I want every single one of them. We're on the Rue des Quatre Vents. I want to show you a facade here of a shop. It's a wine shop today, but it used to be a shop for dairy products known as a crémerie. Let's see, let me find a good vantage point for us. This is where the wide angle lens comes in handy because I can give you these full perspectives right there. Isn't that a beauty? Today a wine shop, but as the signage implies, an old dairy shop. Also a bit of history here from the Nazi occupation, which you'll often find on the left bank. This is a, a little bit different. You don't, don't always see this kind of finish here. It's usually just a limestone plaque. But Mr. Raoul was actually a former fighter in the First World War, survived that, but then died fighting for the FFI, the French Resistance here, in 1944. That's a hero. The weather's a little bit warmer. We had a real cold spell and some snow, but it's a little bit warmer uh, the last couple of days, and it sure makes this process a lot more <laughs> agreeable. This is called the Carrefour de l'Odéon, by the way, the intersection of l'Odéon of, of Odéon. Where does that name come from? Well, it sort of comes from the theater nearby, which we're going to end with today uh, during our walk. We'll end with the theater of the Odéon. But that name goes back to ancient Greece, and I'll explain that later on. But the name is everywhere. Restaurants, cafes, hotels, streets, all named after Odéon. Here, this is the Rue Saint-Sulpice. And I always have loved this view. That is... The Church of Saint Sulpice, down there, I know it's a favorite of mine and a favorite of a lot of, your, of yours as well. Uh, Saint Sulpice featured in my tours of Paris. If you come here in person and you want to book a tour with me, that's what I do almost every day. I'm a full time tour guide here. I love the little hotel entrance there. I think I'm getting some rain on my lens. We're going to have to take care of that. And then look at this, I love when this happens where there's just a, a nondescript flat side of a building with no windows or anything, and they bring an artist in to paint a mural. Let's get a little bit closer. I just love these murals because they're, they're such a, an example, a manifestation of this idea of like, my, sur my surroundings aren't quite inspiring enough and, and beautiful enough, so I'm just going to do something about it. I'm going to make the area prettier. Yeah, it's starting to rain a little bit now. Territoire, that's a play on words, on jeu de mots, as they say in French. T being T. And uh, territoire, if you put it together, that means territories. Sometimes those uh, play, play on words uh, situations work. Sometimes they ring true and sometimes they seem a little bit odd. Let me scoot over here, but their window displays are fun. Still quite a Christmas vibe, huh? They didn't get rid of their Christmas tree in there. It's beautiful with those old books, huh?
Sandra Torres says she's madly in love with Paris and can't wait to come back. I second that emotion. Many times over. Okay, so that's Territoire, a cute little uh, tea room in the area that is just a little bit off the, the beaten track here. Slightly quieter than the rest of your cafes and such. Here we're on the Rue de Condé. And here's another detail that I love. This is something that uh, I guess you'd have to walk through here quite a few times before it dawned on you. But I'm going to stand right in front of this entrance and look at the ornamentation under that, that little balcony. It actually juts out an angle. The ornamentation isn't coming directly out at me. Uh, in other words, at 90 degrees from the building. It's actually coming out at an angle toward here. Especially on the right-hand side, you can see it. Okay, So I've walked to the right and now all of that ornamentation is lined up with me, even though I'm no longer in front of the establishment. The reason is, right behind me, there's a street, the one that we were just on, the Rue Saint-Sulpice, that hits this at an angle. So imagine that the street is coming and hitting the building behind me at a, a particular angle. And for that reason, there we go. For that reason, those details are pointing toward the street rather than pointing toward the front and it'll perhaps be even more obvious if I scroll down and you'll see it's actually the same on the sides of the entrance right here it's actually angled out so I'm gonna stand in f right in front of the building like this so I should see the corner but I don't see the corner I don't see the corner I don't see the corner see it's at a pretty sharp angle just to shoot out toward that street I hope I explain that properly but I, I think that's um, some architect or some designer or an artist decided to make that subtle little move. And I quite like it. All right, let's get going. Still got a lot to show you. Cafe culture is alive and well today. This is a cool vibe. Later for my Patreon supporters, we're going to have a cafe chat that I hope will take place right there. We're going to sit there and have a chat. I've got something fun to share with you um, that we're going to talk about the Eiffel Tower. I've got some real interesting info there and a book that I want to share from my own personal library. And at the end of the street, the Rue de l'Odéon, is the theater of Odéon, uh, which everything's named for in this area. We're not going to go down this street, but we will get to that theater a little bit later. Down that very street on the right-hand side, at number 12, was one of the original and early uh, addresses of Shakespeare and Company, the bookstore. It wasn't the first address. It was her second, I believe. She had a, an original store nearby and then moved down the street there. That is where Hemingway would hang out all the time, down there on the right-hand side. And also um, James Joyce's Ulysses was published there famously by Sylvia Beach, the owner of Shakespeare and Company. So down there at number 12. For those uh, fans of Shakespeare and Company and literary history, hey, it's Claudine Hemingway. I see a freak across the street. Hi, how are you? Where, are you here eating? Wait, wait. Let's say, well, let's say hello to everybody. Hi. Bonjour. This is Claudine Hemingway, but I was just talking wait, about him wait. down the street, of course. Mm -hmm. Any relation? Distant cousin. Distant cousin to Ernest Hemingway. Almost as if I planned this for the video. <laughs> I and turned around. I said, oh, that's Corey. That's fantastic. And she's one of the free, she's one of the, uh, our supporters. And so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And I won't take up more, have more of your time. Go have fun. Thank you. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. Talk about Hemingway. And all of a sudden, her distant cousin, his distant cousin pops up. and That was Claudine. She comes here. She doesn't live here, but she comes here, here often. This is called the Brez Café. I've always wondered how to pronounce this word. For a long time, I pronounced it Bretz. But in Brittany, where this, all this is from, and the best crepes are from Brittany, uh, you pronounce it Brez. Brez. So Brez Café, anytime you see that word, uh, you know that the, the, the crepes and the galettes are going to be very good. The terrace here has the classic black and white colors of Brittany. And the owner of this place actually grew up in Brittany. So nose crepes, but also spend a lot of time in, J in Japan studying their cuisine. So what you'll find at this place, the Brez Cafe, is a, a blend of those two cuisines. Uh, a lot of French influence and uh, a bit of Japanese flair thrown in there from time to time for sure. A little more on the gourmet side, you won't find as many traditional cut there. But really inventive stuff. 
can't miss this hotel that's actually linked to Le Comptoir. Now, earlier when we saw those where the guy was shucking the oysters and whatnot, the, the addresses of Yves Comte de Borde, uh, he owns that place, Le Comptoir, also. Any of you who know Paris, you've come through here for, for sure. Maybe you've eaten at Le Comptoir. But a lot of people don't know he actually owns the hotel as well. So he purchased this place, the Relais Saint-Germain. And it's always real nice, you know, the flowers in the window, real beautiful stuff. <clears throat> Okay, leaving this large, busy uh, intersection, let's find some quieter details and make our way to the theater. This street here is called uh, Rue Monsieur le Prince. You can see it there on the right-hand side. Rue Monsieur le Prince, but it wasn't always called that. It was actually called, in medieval times, that. It says, Ancienne Rue des Fossés Monsieur le Prince, which means it used to be called Rue des Fossés Monsieur le Prince, and Fossé is the word for moat, a medieval moat. So let's meditate on the fact that in the 13th century, Philippe Auguste, medieval king of France, built a wall, a 25-foot stone wall to protect the city. And it ran along essentially the left-hand side of what we're looking now. A little bit further receded from the street, but imagine no buildings here in medieval times, an enormous wall protecting the city, and we'd be standing outside of it, and this used to be the fossé or the moat. It was sometimes a dry moat, sometimes a wet moat, depending on where in the city uh, the, the moat was located. But this was a huge, huge, huge uh, uh, trench dug out just for protection. So you'd have the wall, and then you'd have the fossé or the moat for protection, and then even other components further out keep the city safe. Ah, for me, this is one of the highlights of our tour today. That doorway. Oh my goodness. So we're on the Rue Monsieur le Prince, and it's where another street called the Rue du Pitraine. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Du Pitraine, probably. Uh, right where the street meets it. Let's get a little bit closer. This is a beauty. Hi, everybody. I can see people still coming in. Thank you so much. Number 41 is the episode, and we're in the Odeon section of the 6th arrondissement. This is one of those doors that will stop you in your tracks every time. In fact, if a door like this doesn't stop you in your tracks every time, then you need to rethink your life, honestly, in my opinion. Actually, let me get you a little bit closer here. Again, don't forget that later on today I'll be posting a high def version of this replay. The live version obviously is susceptible to my connection and the weather and various things and sometimes it gets a little blurry, a little, blurry a little fuzzy, but I want you to be able to come back and enjoy everything in HD crispiness. This place is called Miao, and it, it has Asian uh, objects for sale. And I quite like those little, they almost look like puppets, but they're not quite puppets. They're just decoration. And I think they add a charming bit of color to the street. Remember earlier we were looking at the, the shop, the storefront of the Crèmerie, or the Crèmerie? This is an old engraver's shop. Pelletier. Look at those beautiful arches above in the stonework there. Wow. So this place has been going for a long time. I'm trying to look for a date on it. Sometimes they'll put the, uh, the founding date, but I don't see one at the moment. And, they're, they're, you know, they're still selling those, those types of things. 
stationary items and quills and nibs and pens and whatnot. Here's an English language bookstore that you may not have heard of called San Francisco Books Company. English language books, it's uh, used books primarily, but they do sell new ones from time to time, and they'll also buy books, they'll purchase books. And um, it's a nice little haven for English speakers, for sure. Bonjour. Excusez-moi. Nice and packed inside. San Francisco Books Company. Right there. All right, let me move on. I have the feeling that, as usual, I'm going to run a little long here. Oh, yeah, I've already done 30 minutes. So let's get to the theater. Nice doors there as well. At the end of this public broadcast, as usual, I'll be doing an extension, um, almost a part two of this walk for my Patreon supporters and our private Facebook group. So uh, keep an eye out for that. If you are, in fact, a member on Patreon, thank you so much for the support. And as we make it to the theater at the end of the street to finish the public version of this tour today, I want to show you the interior of a hotel, hotel lobby. Right here. This is called the Grand Hotel des Balcons, the Grand Hotel of the Balconies. And they've got, you know, the entrance is nice enough. I like the ironwork up there with the lanterns, but what I really love is the Art Nouveau vibe. This isn't necessarily authentic Art Nouveau, but because they, they renovated their lobby to give it that kind of vibe. But let me go ahead and excuse me for a moment. There we go. Now let me show you this. The, um, Bonjour. Look at that chandelier. Stunning. And the mirror helps to double the effect. This is sort of a decal that you see up there. Um, the Grand Palais, I guess it is, now that I look at it. Ceiling of the Grand Palais. And some more Art Nouveau lov loveliness. You know, subtle, but you can see these little details here and there, especially in the, the moldings. And look at the little umbrella holder. Art Nouveau through and through. And there's a separate little area that's sort of a, a library of sorts. And let me show you this because There's a little library, but look, there's another mini version of the chandelier. So this is the Grand Hotel of the Balconies, Grand Hotel, Grand Hotel de, des Balcons. The front desk has some Art Nouveau flair as well. A nice little hotel lobby. This is fun. A guy flew a plane under the Eiffel Tower. This is often described as a budget hotel. I think it's about 150 euros per night. No air conditioning, so if you come here in the summer, be aware of that. Otherwise, you can find a very affordable, affordable beautiful spot next to everything that you would really need in the 6th arrondissement. All right, here we go. Let's finish at the theater. So what can I tell you about this theater? It's quite often overlooked, or even if it's not overlooked, people don't really 
know much about it. Uh, it's from 1782. That was uh, just before the French Revolution. So this is the time of King Louis XVI out of Versailles and Marie Antoinette and all of that. And King Louis wanted uh, to place a theater here for his royal troupe of actors. And he wanted to, to, to situate it here because it's right next to the Luxembourg Gardens. Just beyond us, to the, right, to the left-hand side rather, is the gate of the Luxembourg Gardens. So the idea was that the king, he wanted his royal subjects when they were waiting for a show in the theater or afterward, that they could have a stroll in the gardens behind, in the Luxembourg Gardens. And so that's why it was placed here. It's called Odeon, or Odeon, because that references an old theater from the Acropolis in, in ancient Greece. And um, so, you know, heavily Greco, uh, Greek-themed uh, temple, almost, even though it's a theater. Still going strong. You can see all the advertisements there for the shows. There's a bar in there that opens at 6 p.m. every day, which is, is very lovely inside. And in the summer, they'll put a cafe out here. There'll be cafe tables in this square. So Louis XVI creates, uh, Louis XVI creates this 1782, and the revolution was very, very soon to come. But for the inaugurative um, performance to open up and officially uh, uh, baptized this theater, it was Marie Antoinette who attended this. Little did she know when she was attending the first show here and probably quite enjoying herself that all these residents, particularly of the Six Only Small and the Odeon area, were going to become some of the key French revolutionary figures and they were going to be her downfall. She was surrounded by the enemy as she was wa watching that, uh, that show during the inauguration. Pardon me while I wipe the lens again. So, what I like about this, very uh, Greek-inspired, as I said, Doric columns, very powerful, imposing columns in the front here. But what they did was they built a square around it. The architecture, the, the apartment buildings were built at the same time. I want you to notice something clever. You see there are arches beyond the columns, right? Arches from left to right. And above the arches, a horizontal band. Right above the arches, this horizontal component that runs across uh, left to right. Well, both of those are repeated and reimagined in, this, in the buildings all around the square. So look at that, the horizontal band and the arches of the theater. And I'm just gonna wrap around. All these buildings are curved, curved facades. Again, horizontal band and arch motif all the way around. So that visually does a great job of tying in the square to the theater itself. And the architecture is mimicked all the way around. Again, the subtle details are the ones that I tend to appreciate even more. Um, and then also on the sides, there are arcades. Let me give you a, well, I'll come over on the side. The arcades get credit for being the very first spot where gas lighting was tried. And they experimented in um, 1815 with gas lighting in Paris. Imagine what a revolution that was. And it made sense that they would put the gas lighting first in the very shishi and very uh, expensive and rich neighborhoods. So the theater right here, if you can see it. Now, I've never come across any information to say otherwise, so we're going to assume that those light fixtures we're looking at are the original gas lamps. They very well could be, and the, the gas would have been pumped through the fixtures there. And uh, all the way up until the Nazi occupation of World War II, there were uh, bookinists, booksellers here, and newspaper kiosks, and little reading cabinets. And so um, it, there was a lot of activity during the day, buying books and newspapers and such. And then at night, of course, the theater would, would kick up. And all these arcades um, on the side were numbered so that the servants and the drivers of the wealthy could come and, and find their masters to pick them up at night after the, the show. So you would tell your servant, you know, pick me up uh, under the arch number 22 or whatever it may be. And the Luxembourg Gardens just beyond. So this is Place de l'Odeon. In this building right in the center of our screen, a few floors up, the guy who you could say started the French Revolution, literally. His name was Camille Desmoulins, and he's in the Palais Royal just before they stormed the Bastille. And he stands up on a cafe table in front of all of his friends, and he's brandishing a pistol, and he says, aux armes citoyens, to the weapons citizens. And two days later, the mob is storming the Bastille, and the French Revolution is underway. So Camille Desmoulins lived right up there. And so when I say that Marie Antoinette came to see the show in this theater being surrounded by the enemy, I absolutely mean that because guys like Desmoulins and Danton 
and uh, a guy called Mara, et cetera, et cetera, all lived in this area and would be the, the founding fathers of that new republic and also participate in quite a lot of blood bloodshed. Camille Desmoulins, who lived up there with his wife and his son, uh, was victim to his best friend in life, Mr. Robespierre. Robespierre, the very infamous dictator, bloodthirsty leader of the revolution in the end. And Robespierre had his friend Desmoulins arrested right here and guillotined. But that's a whole other story, Mr. Robespierre and that whole um, psychosis. <laughs> so here we are. This is the Odeon Theater. The area is called Odeon. It's the 6th arrondissement, Saint-Germain-des-Prés. That is episode number 41 in the can. Let me show you what I look like. And I want to thank you so much. I want you to have a lovely weekend. Um, good night to some of you and, and good day to others. And I will see you next week for another version of this in another neighborhood. And the idea is if you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm going to bring Paris to you as often as I can. So if you are a Patreon supporter, you know where to go. Go to our private Facebook uh, group, the Cafe Chat group. And I am going to, in about two minutes, pop over there and we're going to do an extension of this tour. And I'm going to show you a few of my favorite details just down this way, um, just for you privately. Otherwise, I, uh, if you want to become a Patreon member and the links and everything, if you want to take a tour with me in Paris, go ahead and do so. Click the link in the description here. Everything you need to follow me and find out more about me is in the description in the replay. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining me here in Saint-Germain-des-Prés and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to end each episode with a little fun fact in French. Last episode, I forgot to do that, and I almost did this time around. So what I want to do is mention briefly that if you're driving down the street and you go over a speed bump, they tend to call that in French a dodan, or the back of a donkey, a donkey's back. And then if you go over a pothole, it's often referred to as a nid de poule, which means a hen's nest, right? So I think it's kind of charming that they have these nicknames related to animals. As you're driving down the street, you can at various times be either driving up over a donkey's back or over a hen's nest. So that's a little French fun fact for you to uh, digest for the rest of the day, and I will give you another one next time around. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Everyone's in a friendly mood here in Odeon, and I will see you for the next episode. Take care. Bye.